In this video, I will show you one way to make custom chocolate molds. First, I drew the overall shape of how I wanted the chocolate to look using Affinity Designer. In this example, a hexagon ring was chosen and everyone in the family picked an icon for each segment and one for the cat. The design was converted into three dimensions using a modeling application called Fusion 360. I included draft angles on the edges to make it easier to remove from the mold. The center of this model ended up being a challenge to remove, so be sure to angle the sides enough, especially if your design has interior holes. I also modeled a mold for the silicon mold, which is shown in red. After the 3D model was complete, I imported it into the lychee slicer to prepare for resin 3D printing, which produces a very smooth surface. This model required quite a few supports. Next, the model is 3D printed, which in this case took about 7 hours. After printing, the excess resin is rinsed off and the supports are removed. Once dried, the model is fully cured with ultraviolet light. Next, the model is sanded until the surface is very smooth. The final step in preparing the model is to apply a clear finish. The model is then used to create a silicone mold. It is important to choose the proper material for this step because the sulfur in resin prints can inhibit the curing process of platinum cured silicone. The 3D print must be fully cured and sealed or a tin cured silicone can be used. Once cured, the mold is removed from its mold. It is finally time to repair the chocolate. We like the taste of combining dark and milk chocolates and start by chopping up the bars. Next, about two thirds of the chocolate is heated in the microwave for about one minute at 60% power. This will vary for different microwaves, but the goal is to heat it up to around 110 degrees Fahrenheit. At the same time, heat up the mold. You will want it to be between 90 and 100 degrees Fahrenheit when the chocolate is poured. Mix the melted chocolate and as it cools, slowly mix in the remainder of the chopped chocolate bits. This step is very important because it seeds the melted chocolate with a proper crystalline microstructure so it becomes properly tempered. Otherwise, the resulting chocolate will have a dull rather than shiny appearance and it won't snap when breaking. Once the tempered chocolate has cooled to around 95 degrees Fahrenheit, it can be poured into the mold. Then, let the chocolate cool slowly for 5 to 10 minutes before refrigerating. After the chocolate has hardened, carefully remove it from the mold and is now ready to be eaten or wrapped in foil. Mm -hmm. 